Hey, welcome to the Healthy Postnatal Body Podcast with your postnatal expert Peter Lab. That, as always, will be me. This is the podcast for the 17th of April. And you know, date before music means I have a guest on. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is what I alluded to last week. I'm talking to uh, Therese Thornton Barnes T, as she is also known. She's a household toxins health specialist. And basically, we're talking household cleaners, aerosols, PFAS, PFAs. Uh, depending on how you pronounce it, PFAS, she calls them, uh, microplastics, all that sort of stuff. What is the problem with a lot of household chemicals, household products? Uh, Are they dangerous? Should you be careful? What can you use? What works? What doesn't work? Uh, I mean, we went over so much, and I don't mind telling you, this was a difficult one for me. As I said at the start of the of the podcast, <laughs> I come from a different generation where we just b- believed that all this sort of stuff was fine. And now more and more and more studies are coming out that show us that they are not. Well, T knows all about it. And she takes an hour out of her day to talk to me. This was a phenomenal chat. I highly, highly recommend that you stick around and, you know, listen for a bit. All right, here we go. So we'll start with the first and the big question, you know. Most people, myself included, right, because I'm I always point this out, I'm a middle-aged white guy. I'm 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 the science guy, I'm born of a certain generation that used to just think, now all this stuff is, is safe. Household cleaners, drinking water is completely safe. You know, that's what government guidelines are for and all that sort of stuff. And now we just find more and more reports come out regularly saying that's not the case at all. It turns out that all these crunchy people from California. You know, they t- 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 turn out they were all right. Mm. So can you take us through some of the basics that you think we should really be aware of? Yeah, I love how you say the crunchy people from California, because <laughs> I grew up in the 60s and the 70s. And I I grew up in uh, Buffalo, New York, so mm-hmm. closer to Toronto than it is to New York City. But uh, I grew up as a, uh, they used to call us the granola heads yeah. back then. And that's how I grew up. I grew up on organic food. My mother was like, stay away from these cleaning supplies. We're mm. only using vinegar. We're only using, uh, uh, baking soda for the toilet. So, and we would help clean every Saturday. And that's, wh- that's how I knew that's what I knew. And I actually went to college to open up a supermarket uh, that would in, inform everybody and show them that there's all these great products out there, but nobody could get their hands on them. Now in the United States, that supermarket is now called Whole Foods. Oh, hey. But anyways, 35 years, I had a party planning business, not a soup, not Whole Foods and not a health food store. But through all those years, I've seen through the years of helping people on the side of my, on the side, just helping them get toxic chemicals out of their house. And through those years, I've seen the increase of chemicals being used in so many different products. You know, there used to be five on the shelf back in the 70s, and then the 80s, there's 10. And then, you know, and now there's like, you need a different chemical product to clean the toilet that you do for the windows that you do for the counter to the floor to mm-hmm. the, and it, the list goes on and on and on. So we, we're in this, this bad cycle of seeing these products just multiply because the money behind them is intense. And so many chemicals are behind them too. So mm-hmm. I don't even know if I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it's, it's like you said, it, it's, it's astonishing because when mm-hmm. I grew up in the, well, what I, tended to buy is I used to buy bathroom cleaner. I used to buy a kitchen cleaner because that smells different. And I like the smell of kitchen cleaner in the kitchen better than I do the bathroom cleaner. The, the bathroom cleaner is lemon scented and all that sort of stuff. I think we have four or five different products for the floor. Mm. Um, and we just have like wooden flooring, but we have four, four or five different, different uh, cleaning products for that. Of course, during my lifetime, flash wipes and all those sort of things came out. Um, the must have them in the stage. Those, those, those uh, cleaning wipes mm-hmm. that 
you know, if you don't need to do a proper clean, as they used to say, with all the all the bottles and all the diluting and all that sort of stuff, then you could just grab a wipe and just wipe the surface down, kills 99.9% .9 of all bacteria and all that sort of stuff. And we kind of now realize that a lot of these things, the, the wipes at least are, are plastic, and therefore we kind of stop buying them because, you know, it chokes a turtle somewhere. Right. Uh, because you flush it down the toilet, throw it in the bin, it, and it ends up in the ocean somewhere. That's just what happens with these things. But more and more reports are now just coming out saying that actually all the chemicals in this stuff, where we thought there were safety levels, so we thought they were okay, because we understand that they're chemicals, but what we were told was that chemicals are not necessarily unsafe. These things have been tested, and within certain limits, you know, these things are fine. And now we find, or more and more studies are coming out that show that that is just not the case at all. So how many of these things do I need to get rid of? <laughs> okay, so that let's start with the cleaning supplies. So mm -hmm. you are absolutely correct that these products are, you're being told that they're safe and they're not necessarily safe. And now, uh, Scotland might be a little different than the United States, because in the United States, we have a policy here that it's uh, the product can be put on the market and not it, you do not have to prove that it's safe. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I know the European Union, their policy is you have to prove it's safe before it yeah. can go on the market. So in the United States, it's different. But no matter what, wherever the product is, you have to you have to pay attention to the ingredients, just like you pay attention to the ingredients you put in in your body that you're mm -hmm. eating, whether it's you know whatever food you're eating. So you don't want to be eating chemicals, but if you're cleaning your house with chemicals, you are breathing those chemicals mm -hmm. in. They are getting into everything in your house, so your dust even will collect those chemicals. And you're breathing them in, you may be touching them, you definitely could be ingesting them, you're spraying them. So, you know, you, you have to pay attention to every label of anything in your house. And you can't rely on the front of the label where it says lemon scented. You can't because that's definitely um, a, a red flag. Mm -hmm. You can't rely on a label that says all natural. Um, or or scented with essential oils because uh, again in the U.S. it only has to be two percent of essential oils and then everything else can be chemicals. Right. So um, the other thing with uh, fragrance now, so many people grew up with these smells, thinking that these smells are uh, okay and that that's that's the smell of a clean house. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the smell of clean laundry. That's the smell of clean sheets. And unfortunately, you have to break that habit because that is not the case. That is the smell of chemicals that potentially are causing cancer and many other illnesses, especially endocrine disruptors. The um, Just it, talking to your audience, I know mm -hmm. it's uh, postnatal, um, a, a large audience of postnatal uh, women. So the 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 endocrine disruptors that are in so many different products, especially the line of chemicals that are called phthalates, um, which is a whole laundry list of chemicals that can make plastic more, um, uh, uh, more pliable. And it also is in hairspray. It's in nail polish. It's in makeup. It's in cleaning supplies. It's in everything. So it's it's daunting to really um, fathom the amount of chemicals that you are bringing in your home. And typically our homes, everybody's homes, wherever you mm -hmm. live in the world, considerably two to 20 times more polluted than the outdoor air. And it all depends on where you live. But um, typically, if you're cleaning your home with these cleaning supplies and then saying you're using laundry detergent that has chemicals in it that is venting into your house and you're sleeping in sheets and your shirts and they're outgassing, constantly outgassing. I smell people all the time that they're outgassing chemicals on them as they are wearing them all day long and then sleeping in them and then your pillowcase. So the list goes on and on and on. So the number one thing I try to get people to realize about these chemicals and one word on many, many labels is the word fragrance. Mm -hmm. Now again, 
that's on a lot of fragrance or perfume or perfume. Again, I think this is uh, just anybody can put this on a label, uh, you know, whether it's different in Scotland than it is in the United States, but in the United States, they do not have to tell you what chem any chemical that is in that product, if it has the word fragrance in it, because it's a trade secret. Mm -hmm. Because of the perfume industry mm -hmm. creating, creating that, that trade secret back in the 1940s. So they're hiding chemicals behind that word fragrance in so many different products, in addition to all the other chemicals they're putting in the product. So it's really the consumer that has to be aware of this. And that's the only way that we're going to get things to change. But um, reducing your toxic load is the number one important thing that anybody can do. And that is by reading your labels and not uh, buying products with all those chemicals. Now people think, oh, how am I going to clean my house? I've got to have a, you know, what about bacteria? What about viruses? What about this? What about that? The, the, the product, the simple water, vinegar, and if you want to add some essential oils, now you're, you're in, I told you I have a product, right? An all purpose mm -hmm. cleaner. Yeah. I mean, you can't buy it overseas, but it's that simple. I mean, I have an all purpose cleaner because I was making it for friends and family and everybody wanted me to keep making it because they felt like it was doing such a better job than uh, their Clorox, than their 409s, whatever they were. And they felt like they were, you know, not uh, polluting their house anymore, mm -hmm. but it's, it's water and vinegar. It's getting back to the basics. And this is, this is um, going to save people a lot of money. You don't need all those chemicals to, to spray on your counters and your floor. You're being told you need all that because the chemical companies and the products are telling you, yeah, it kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria or viruses. Look up vinegar. It's been around for hundreds of years. And uh, it's a simple, you know, way to uh, clean. So it's, um, that's all that I, well, now I just use mine because I love the smell of all the essential oils, which also, by the way, have antibacterial, antiviral properties in them too, from cinnamon to rosemary to uh, clove and a bunch of other things that I put in that product. But it's getting back to the basics. Let's, I think no matter where you live in this world, it's getting back to what did we clean with back in the turn of the century? What did they clean with? They were cleaning fine back then. Mm -hmm. um, cancer and diabetes and uh, birth defects and um, uh, problems getting pregnant, all these have developed in the you know past 60, 70, 80 years. I mean, were they around before then? Yeah, but think about the rates. The mm -hmm. cancer rates are just outrageous. And so many products have cancer causing chemicals in them that were baking into our skin from sunscreen or putting in our hair from shampoo. Um, you know, and I always say pick your poisons because I color my hair. Mm -hmm. So I, I find the best uh, company to use. And, you know, you don't have to, you know, get rid of everything, but you want to reduce your toxic load. That's, that's the ultimate goal is to reduce it because what that's going to do, your body is constantly fighting Anything that comes into your body that it doesn't know what it is. And so your liver, your kidney, everything has to process all of these chemicals in addition to the food, in mm -hmm. addition to the pesticides that you potentially ate from an apple or whatever. And that weakens your immune system as well. So it's really a domino effect because uh, your immune system. And of course, we all want to boost our immune system as much as possible, especially these days. And uh, so it's, it's really, a, it's, it's, it's something that you really should pay attention to. And don't get overwhelmed with it. Go slow, one product at a time, start reading that label. And um, you will, you know, slowly get these chemicals out of your life. And so many people that I talk to, that I help, um, have minor headaches. Some of them have major headaches. Some of them have migraines. So many of these chemicals can cause simple things like that. I had one person that she thought she had uh, hay fever, and it was oh the the you know the 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 uh, pollen. Pollen. Thank yeah. you. 
And she had she had the worst lawn, the laundry detergent. I had to get her to change it. I said, you're sleeping in chemicals. You're waking up congested every morning. You're sleeping in these chemicals that are getting into your sinus cavities. You've got to get that out and reduce that and eliminate those. So, and sure enough, um, her symptoms went away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, there's, and there's so many things that these chemicals can wreak havoc with on our health. And it's just a matter of just starting to be aware and listening to your podcast here. Um, hopefully somebody's going to, you know, listen to it and say, Oh my God, I've got to start looking at these products I'm bringing into my house. Anything that comes into our house, I don't, and I have an Airbnb here as well. Mm -hmm. And people, people leave things behind and I'm like, Oh, got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of that. Yeah. Got to get rid of that. You know, and, and anybody that comes in our house is constantly like, can you tell me about this product? Because I study labels and you don't, my sister has a rule and we all grew up this way. She said, if I can't pronounce um, any of the, the ingredients, I don't buy it. So right. Yeah, and, and, and it's quite funny because it's 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 what you said. I mean, we obviously know with aerosols, especially there's a real problem mm. with aerosols. I yeah. mean, and the not half funny, but the weird funny thing is that certain newspapers in the UK, The Guardian and uh, all this, have actually been reporting all all those all these reports saying that mm. aerosols are terrible for you. Every single one, and that yeah. goes for links deodorant. And it goes for Febreze taking out all the smells of your home, or mm. and it goes for all these little plug-in diffusers and all that sort of stuff that you have everywhere to make your house smell less like your dog or something like that. <laughs> um, but it it is they have been reporting on it, but no one's ever really picked it up over here in the UK. As in some people know about it, but it's never really gotten any, there's never really been any momentum behind that change and even if i now because to prepare for this as as much as i do um i went to a couple of supermarkets before this and i couldn't find a single cleaning product that would or scent product that would fall in the category of what you're describing as being acceptable to live in the to, to have in the house and the astonishing thing is that when you said you've got your product uh, other people will be selling it online. But everything is artisan now. If I go through to the supermarket, there's always an artisan section. There's always a well-being section. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't actually made it through to the cleaning aisle yet. Yeah. Which it's is very astonishing. True. Mm -hmm. uh, very true. And many, um, again, I don't know uh, what your labels have to do, but many of the products over here do not have to disclose all the ingredients in them, especially mm. dryer sheets. <sighs> dryer sheets are yeah. extremely toxic. Um, and people are like, dryer sheets? Why are mm. they toxic? Loaded with cancer causing and many other chemicals in them. Um, so it's, and I, I, it is astonishing. I go to our supermarkets here and, you know, the larger ones, because I typically shop at uh, a little uh, co-op. Mm -hmm. um, but going down that aisle, it's the only time I really want to put a mask on. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, thank God I still have a mask in my purse. <laughs> but um, it is. And the advertising that they uh, uh, promote that, it, you know, that it's got to be white or bright or clean or mm -hmm. sparkly kills viruses. That's the big thing now. Everybody wants yeah. to kill a virus. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you're killing your good uh your good cells that are mm -hmm. never going to be you know that you would you need those to fight any virus that comes your way but um it's uh yes the good news is i think there's a huge shift because there's been a lot of things being exposed as of late um mm -hmm. there's a lot of lawsuits here in the united states against a lot of these products right now and against a lot of the chemical companies mm -hmm. And uh, you bring up um, aerosol. Aerosols can be um, very toxic. And in the United States, about five different products, sunscreen, uh, deodorant, what just came out, um, some, 
I forgot which one it was, whatever it was, but all these products, there's an independent lab here in uh, the state of Connecticut that has been testing products like off the shelf for chemicals. Mm -hmm. And they've been exposing the chemical benzene in them. Mm -hmm. Benzene <clears throat> is a known carcinogen, not yeah. just a potential. It causes cancer. It should mm -hmm. not be in any product. Then they're saying they don't know where it came from. Well, it's it's the where it probably came from is again the word fragrance. Mm -hmm. So if you are using any product that has any smell to it whatsoever, and you think that that smell is great because you're, you think that's clean laundry mm -hmm. or clean hair um, or clean deodorant, uh, perfume, yeah. perfume and perfume, which typically women put or men put on your necks, right? Mm -hmm. in, in this area, which is your um, thyroid. Mm -hmm. We have so many issues with thyroids that, of course, the thyroid is so important to the function of our bodies. And some people say it rules the body and all those chemicals can be affecting your thyroid. So if it's if you are using anything that has any scent to it, that's that's where you want to start right away, mm -hmm. switching those out with something that has, all you know, ingredients that are disclosed. Chemicals that you, if you can't pronounce them, don't use them mm -hmm. and go for something that has only essential oils in it, vinegar and water. And I'm sure you can find something like that over there. I hope you can. Otherwise, I'm going to be coming over and selling them in Scotland. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm fairly sure that there's a market for your stuff over here as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because like I said, it's tricky to come by and, and like you said, the knowledge is slowly creeping out there. I think more and more people are now speaking about the things that you've been talking about for a long time um, because quite often what, what always used to happen and and I was very much one of those people right yes these things are potential carcinogens but only in x dosage right mm. and then therefore we were at the stage where we said yeah but the dosage in this product is so far below the place where it becomes a problem that it's therefore not a problem so we forgot about the uh, uh, cumulative effect of using many mm -hmm. other products um, like we kind of do with medication they're much more aware of this now with medication is the trying to see how products work together because that is obviously never really tested and also we find that most of these safety guidelines uh, turn out to be massively outdated and that the safe levels are actually significantly lower than what we thought they were. And mm -hmm. there is no scientific consensus on what the safety levels are anyways, because in the EU, for instance, I, I, I saw this thing about PFAs uh, in the mm. drinking water recently. They said in the EU, it's ten, the safety level is 10 times lower than it is in the UK. And it's again another 10 times higher, the safety level in, in, the, in, the, in the state. Therefore, you can put a lot more crap in your water in the States or in the UK than you can do in the EU. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. Yeah, so a couple things here. Uh, the cumulative effect you first bring up, and then I want mm -hmm. to talk about PFAS chemicals. Uh, the cumulative effect, nobody knows what that, that cumulative effect is. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, when they say in a product that the level of uh, phthalates in that product is a safe level. Well, the problem is that that's one product you're using. Now, you a woman typically uses 16 products in one day mm -hmm. on her body. And the, the mix of those chemicals from all those products, deodorant, lipstick, toothpaste, hairspray, mm -hmm. you know, the list goes on. Men use typically about eight products a day, still a lot. But the, the amount of chemicals that you're putting on your skin or breathing in all day long, nobody knows how those are all mixing inside your body together. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, then you're, you're eating non-organic food, let's just say, and you're drinking some beverages that are also potentially have uh, toxic ingredients in them. 
And because they're out there too, um, mm -hmm. and you're eating cereal that potentially is uh, loaded with glyphosate because that's mm -hmm. what they spray all these crops with now. All of this is going into your system. They don't measure that. They're just measuring that one ingredient that yeah. goes in that one product. So on that note, um, you have to consider all these things. Um, 132 different chemicals potentially you're putting on your skin in one day. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. So you have to take the whole big picture uh, of, I, I try to get people to realize from the start of the day to the end of the day, look at the products you're using and pay attention to all those different chemicals that you're using all day long. It's astonishing, mm -hmm. it really is. And that might open up your eyes a little bit. Then, um, so, and then, you start changing those out. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, the if you really want to uh, make your own cleaning supplies, you can. And there's so many do-it-yourself uh, recipes out there. Maybe you start getting rid of your clean and go back to the basics, as I said, or mm -hmm. look online. There's what I actually even have some do-it-yourselfs on my website as well. I want to help as many people as possible mm -hmm. try to realize you do not need all these cleaning supplies to clean your entire house. Um, once in a while, if you want to use something because, you know, you, you need it. Okay. Open up the window, make sure you get those chemicals out. But mm -hmm. so that's one thing. And then you mentioned PFAS. So PFAS are a whole uh, hundreds of thousands actually of chemicals. Mm -hmm. It's a whole family PFAS, and that's what we're talking about. PFAS are uh, they? They're they're they're. It's a huge problem, pandemic in my mm -hmm. in my mind over here because, and it's the same everywhere in the world right now because these PFAS chemicals are they um, they're they're in um, uh, many different products. They make things waterproof. They they're in dental floss. Dental floss, mm -hmm. they're in dental floss so they can glide and those are chemicals to make it glide. They're in any kind of plastic um, water repellent, anything that's water repellent, they're in, their pl they're in plastic. They're in fire uh, retardant, um, uh, anything that's fire retardant. Mm -hmm. So now they're, you know, people, the companies are still spraying furniture with fire yeah. retardants. Um, the, there's a big, big problem here with firefighters because it's in the phone that they're spraying into all these homes that mm -hmm. are, you know, whatever. So all these chemicals, these PFAS chemicals, which are called the forever chemical, which are almost impossible to get rid of, are in our water now. And it's in our drinking water. And the fish are now being affected. And we as consumers are drinking these chemicals. So it's a huge problem. And uh, really the uh, the only way that I know to really get rid of it is some type of reverse osmosis system. And uh, which we have, we have one and they're not, they're not cheap. I, I feel bad that, you know, not everybody can have a reverse osmosis system. And unfortunately it is, it's a huge issue that people are drinking these, drinking these chemicals. And um, over here, our water supply um, comes from, uh, you know, uh, different counties, of course, but sure. they're only they're only putting things in to kill the bacteria. Yeah. They're not doing anything to filter out the pharmaceuticals that are being flushed down the toilet mm -hmm. or the pharmaceuticals that are in our water. I mean, they've got to go somewhere when somebody urinates. They're going mm -hmm. out into the water. They do nothing about the, anything there. They do nothing about any of these P5 chemicals. They can't. They'd have to put a reverse osmosis system on every water facility. And they haven't figured that out yet. Although I understand over in India, there's there's something going on over there because their water is so polluted. But it's a huge issue. And the the when I work with people, we look at their water all the time and get it tested. <laughs> And so that's my husband walking in and no my dog problem. going crazy. <laughs> no problem. My mind um, in it quietly. So, good yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so water is a water is a big issue. I don't know how it is over there. Um, it's just something to consider. And I we keep, you know, I always get people to at least at least filter out the the chlorine 
a Brita. Mm-hmm. I know Brita is yeah. what you can buy. At least get the chlorine out so you're getting some chemicals out of your water because that that um, filters out the the chemical the chlorine and potentially maybe some other um, chemicals in there. But um, at least do something, and that's uh, that's the first step doing mm-hmm. that. And then there's some other. Um, units that you can buy that potentially even I, I've heard there's one that you can put on your shower head that um, mm-hmm. filters out that are not that expensive as well. So baby steps, take baby yeah, steps it, because it's, it, it's, yeah, it's a really tricky one because obviously it's everywhere. Like you said, yeah. I mean, I read an article in one of the Dutch newspapers uh, this week, which will be my in the news this week for later on in the podcast, that 90% of all makeup, that mm. people use contains microplastics. Yes. 90% of all makeup. And like you said, I mean, I did an interview a while ago with Dr. Hugh Pharma, who is a, uh, he has a PhD in the microbiome and all that sort of stuff. And he was saying that indeed women put something like 500 ingredients on their face every day. That's just yeah. 500 different ingredients just on their face. And it, it's disastrously bad for, like you said, the, the good bacteria, the, the the microbiome, the gut biome, and all that sort of stuff. And there's definitely a link between these two. Um, and he was saying to take care of your skin, it means putting less makeup on your face, using less aggressive cleaners and, and all that sort of stuff. So it makes sense that, and I think we accept that more and more now, um, in 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 the West that you know putting layers and layers and layers of makeup on the face and then using a really aggressive cleaner to get rid of all that stuff is probably not good for your skin. Um, it makes sense that the same goes for your house. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it's interesting that that you say okay, so so we know PFAS, we know the aerosols and all that sort of stuff because all we know microplastics are bad first, but you know the if they're in absolutely everything, everything, then there has to be, um, we're about, we're not far off the same age, I wouldn't have guessed. Um, <laughs> um, do you remember when CFCs were a thing? When fridges all contain, when the ozone layer was going to pop, right? Yeah. Remember in the yeah. 80s and the 90s? Yes. When yes. all the fridges all of a sudden had to be recycled, we had to get rid of the stuff because yes. a hole in the ozone layer was going to murder us all. That was the thing that was going to happen, right? And therefore, a tremendous amount of action was taken worldwide to just say, listen, this can't happen because we'll all be dead in 50 or 100 years or we'll grow extra arms or whatever it is. I think right. skin cancer was the big thing then. That, that, do you see a big push? coming from anywhere um, in in American, maybe in in American politics or local movements that has that same sort of incentive behind it that we had with CFCs in the the 80s or maybe it was early 90s. The people say microplastics, uh, PFAS, all that sort of stuff. We have to ban this sort of thing. Do you see that anywhere? Uh, Absolutely. And it's um, it's these companies are getting exposed. Uh, lawsuits, of course, you, you see the rise in lawsuits. I was actually just Googling yesterday lawsuits and benzene and all these these companies are getting on the benzene bandwagon, which actually was just started really picking up traction was August. So that's happening. The uh, glyphosate and Monsanto with Monsanto. Mm-hmm. Of course, is owned by Bayer, which I think is owned by uh, a com- company over in Europe somewhere. Yeah, it's a big um, German now. It's a big German. German, yeah. yeah, which surprises me because Germany has a little bit. I thought they did. I thought they. Well, whatever. Anyway, so there's a there's a there is a shift, and I see it in uh, the next generation, the 20s and mm-hmm. 30s, social media. This is where social media is so great because their their generation, they talk and they talk on social media all the time and they're starting to see all these chemicals and they want all natural products. I have nieces and nephews, so I I monitor everything they do and they're Mm -hmm. 
they're constantly, they and their friends are asking me like, you know, there's so many horrible products out there. What do we do? And so I just feel it. And it's not just coming from me. I just feel like there's a, a shift coming there as well. I also see some regulations starting, especially with the, the makeup industry. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some shifts coming there a little bit. Uh, this these these independent companies starting to expose these companies and what they're 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 fooling the consumer and Target even uh, I think they stated in in about a year and a half every product has to that they sell has to have every ingredient nothing can be hidden on their products that they sell so there's little things like that that are huge steps in the right direction. Um, government, of course, is huge. They're starting to see this as well. So unfortunately, sometimes it takes people getting sick. And that's the worst part about it. And that's why I'm doing what I, um, uh, that's what I'm doing to help people try to prevent getting sick. Mm -hmm. Let's get these chemicals out of your bodies, out of your homes before you get cancer, before you get uh, any other illness that potentially could cause havoc on your life. And so it's, it's taking people like you and I and many others that are uh, talking about it and getting the word out there in, uh, in layman terms, you know, Mm -hmm. we can't, we, you know, the scientists can say what they can say, but sometimes you don't understand what they're saying. And we need to just go to the basics. Let's get back to the basics and, and let's learn how to clean our homes and feel like our homes are clean. Um, so we don't need to buy all these mm-hmm. chemicals and you can save money too. The best part about it. Well, yes. Cause it's expensive. Cause I had a, again, I had a root for the cupboard. Uh, today. Yeah. And, and you know how it goes when you buy any sort of cleaners, especially furniture polish, you, you use it once and then it's in the cupboard for like five years or something like that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, but, but it's, it's astonishing. If I added up the value of all the cleaning products in my house, I'm fairly sure I easily surpassed 100 pounds. So those are 120, 130 dollars, um, which is still a considerable, considerable amount of money. I mean, that yes. is, uh, you know, in the UK we're talking about the cost of living crisis at the moment. I'm sure petrol prices are. Of all my American friends that tell me they're rising, and even in even in the US, you almost pay a normal amount for petrol now. Uh, we pay significantly more over here, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, people can do with that money being in their pocket rather than right, um, rather than ending up in some um, in some cleaning companies' pocket. And like you said, they're all the bit all. It's all the big multinationals, right? These these guys are all. It's 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 Bayer, Nestle, mm-hmm. and all and all those sort of uh, all all those sort of companies. Because even the smaller, you you mentioned this earlier on. When you say all natural on on the label, and it doesn't necessarily mean all that much. Um, mm-hmm. Because technically, arsenic is natural, right? Um, yeah, right. <laughs> so, so it's it's but all the smaller firms tend to be owned by the big conglomerates anyway, and they yes. all have very similar products in them because you know they're basically all a lot of them are made in the same factory, um, right? With the same stuff, there's just a different label on these uh, on these. Yes. So what? What ingredients, as so far as that there are ingredients on, on, on the cleaning uh, label, should we really pay attention to? That you're like, okay, this is where you start. First of all, 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 all the nice smelling stuff, we're going to get rid of. We'll just use lavender essential oil or good quality essential oils, because that obviously matters as well. Right. What are, what are like the, the top ones that you're like, okay, we need to get rid of anything with x chemical in it i didn't know benzene was still a thing to, to be honest I, um because that was yeah. very high on that list uh, a while ago yeah so you know it's interesting that you asked me this today because um i literally just today because today i don't know when when this is going to air but today as we talk i think sunday right uh this will be Sunday the 17th, I want to say. Yeah. So yeah. our con- yeah, so today's actually World Health Day. Right. And um 
on World Health Day, I launched this guide. It's called Toxins to Avoid. And actually, you can get this on my website. Cool. Um, and I list on here all your toxins that you want to typically avoid in mm -hmm. any product that you um, use. So let's just take shampoo, uh, the sulfates. The most worrying yeah. products in shampoo are sulfates. So sodium lauryl sulfate, right. one product that you'll see a lot. Sometimes it says sodium laureth sulfate um, or ammonium laurel sulfate. Mm -hmm. uh, those are typically ones that they create the shampoo's lathering effect. Right. Um, and possible side effects are uh, hormone disruption may cause, may contain traces of dioxin and has been linked to cancer and kidney failure. Right. So that's, and that's a very common product in many, many different, um, or common ingredient in many, many different uh, products. I said the word pair or fragrance. Another one is parabens. Now you'll see a lot of products that say paraben free. Mm -hmm. um, there's five different types of paraben. There's methyl paraben, propyl paraben, butyl paraben, benzyl paraben, isobutyl paraben. Anyways, the last part of it is it says paraben. You want to avoid anything that says uh, paraben. So uh, triclosan, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, triclosan has actually been linked to cancer as well. Um, it kills bacteria um, on the skin. It blocks and mimics hormones, which is a huge factor right now with these chemicals that are uh, mimicking hormones. Mm -hmm. And they're actually, many of them are changing the uh the testicular uh, uh, structure of a man's organs and mm -hmm. changing where they're located. Um, that's on humans, not necessarily mice right now. That is on humans being, being and the, the, these chemicals are in a lot of men's different products. So uh, triclosan is definitely one to avoid as well. And I mean, the problem is there's over 10,000 chemicals. Sure. And there's probably even more than that at this point. I met, I mentioned phthalates and um, phthalates, and I was mispronounced that, so I'm sorry. Um, and there's, there's the, the list goes on and on and on. Um, those are some of the most concerning and common ones that I would say stay away from. Right. Okay. So, um, just for everybody, what I might do is go to your website tonight. Yeah. It's night I'm yeah. over here. Um, I'll share the link on my social, um, overnight or tomorrow morning so that people listening to this a week and a half later think hey i've, I've seen that list so, so that they they already uh yeah have, have an idea that so they have, have access to the list and all that sort of stuff i'll definitely link to it in the podcast description as well uh for sure. everybody listening to this um so what are we supposed to wash our hair with i mean not a problem for me is everybody listening to this or not <laughs> 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 but what are you supposed to wash your hair with? Because we, we're all very much used to the nice, fragrant, smelling of rosemary and lavender sort of shampoo. Or pomegranate is, is the popular one, I believe. Oh, well, and you want to know how many, how much pomegranate or natural anything is in that shampoo? Oh, there, there's, there's never any pomegranate in there. It's just pomegranate <laughs> scent with the fragrance of fresh pomegranate. Or lavender. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. And you know what the problem with all those chemical, all those fragranced shampoos um, is what they do is they make these, uh, they make the smell out of mm -hmm. all these, you know, chemicals that they put together. And the problem is then they have to put more chemicals in to kill the bad smell of the chemical. Mm. So it's like one thing after the next that they've got to throw all these chemicals together to get that, that scent of somebody's hair that they think is a nice, beautiful scent. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's not a nice, beautiful scent. It's a toxic scent. What do you wash your hair with? That is uh, always a question that is presented to me. Um, I, 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 I use a couple of different products over here and I doubt it the products are even over there because mm -hmm. they're in our, our, our little shop here that we go to. But um, 
search online for, I mean, I don't know what um, your your products would be over there, um, but I would search for something, number one, without a scent, mm -hmm. scent free. Um, that's the number one thing because you do not want your hair smelling like anything. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but people that want their hair smelling and they think that is, you are potentially causing some um, issues with your health with yeah. that. I mean, it's just okay. the bottom line. So um, I actually use soap bars. So soap bars are very common now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's soap and it's, it, there's, it's literally looks like a bar of soap. Yeah. And that's what the way they in. used to be. <laughs> it's the way they used to be. Yeah. So, and then I'll condition it with some, the best healthiest conditioner I can find because I need something sometimes for my hair. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and then, and then the other thing is there's no plastic. That's the other problem with the plastic being thrown out and mm -hmm. ending up in our oceans and sure. in our, uh, landfills. So the soap bar just goes away. You don't have to throw anything away. So I know it's hard for people to fathom a soap bar, but that's how it used to be. And that's how we do it here. So no, it's interesting that you mentioned that because that reminded me. Uh, of something that I saw a, a few years ago, so I'll get in touch with that company and see if they if they're still kicking about. But it's because, of course, like we mentioned earlier, it's not just the the, the plastics of your shampoo bottle and all that sort of stuff, um, but the microplastics in the shampoo. Oh, uh, because microplastics are apparent, and I didn't know why they were being used. I kind of. You know, I'm a jackass, and, and I know very little about this stuff. Um, I assumed that microplastics were basically big pieces of plastic that have broken down over time to become little pieces of plastic. And I think, in me admitting that, I think there'll be a whole host of people listening to that and yeah, is that not what they are? That is not what they are. <laughs> so apparently they are used in shampoo and all that to make the product gloopy. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't know that maybe that's just how, how we've been conditioned when, when you buy body wash or something like that, that we expect the body wash to have a certain consistency. We don't want it to be too thin because then we think we're being ripped off, right? In the same way. Right. Uh, so they make it gloopy. They make it thicker. And that's what microplastics are actually, are actually doing. And of course, if you just use a bar of soap, then you don't have that problem either. And, you know, you're saving the life of at least one trout or salmon, which, well, those of them, which you probably end up eating sooner or later, right? Um, exactly. That's the major problem. And they're also found in toothpaste. Yeah. They're found in lotion. Um, and then they end up in our ocean. So, mm -hmm. uh, and the fish, it's a huge problem with fish right now too. So it's... Uh, definitely an issue a major issue um to avoid that along with any type of plastics mm -hmm. anything you want to avoid a plastic as much as possible um that you are uh putting on you and we never we didn't even get into plastics in the kitchen and never store food in plastic uh so you want to avoid it store it in glass never in plastic so well, that is that is again it's fascinating. I was listening to the problem with John Stewart this week, the podcast, mm -hmm. uh, and he was doing a thing on recycling. And I've said this for a long time. I think in the West we massively overestimate the power of recycling. Um, most plastics can't actually be recycled, even if it says on the on the tin that they can. Um, and he had a recycling expert on who said exactly that. And funnily enough. Countries like China, people are much more aware that recycling is just not a thing, um, at least not in the way that, that we tend to do it uh, in, in the West. And therefore, they just focus on buying less stuff and indeed, funnily enough, reusing and reusable materials. Then you're talking glass, then you're talking paper, then you're talking uh, cardboard and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, if you can buy something, because it doesn't matter. I mean, glass, and this is this comes back to when, when I was growing up, like in the 70s and 80s. 
glass always used to be recycled. You took it to the supermarket in Holland, uh, all your empty beer bottles and Coke. Right. Remember when Coke came in a bottle, a proper bottle? Yes. Um, the empty bottles you took to the supermarket and you got money back for it um, because you paid. We call it Stasifeld in Holland. It's, it's like a deposit, like a premium. Uh, like 5p, uh, five, 5 cents on, on a bottle of Coke. And if you then took the bottle back, you got your 5 right. cents back, right? Right. Um, because that stuff can be reused, whereas none of the plastic can actually be recycled. So getting rid of that, you're not just doing yourself a favor, you're doing the environment a massive favor as well. Exactly. By just uh, By just storing stuff in glass. Um, because apparently Tupperware isn't actually good for us. No, no. I mean, anything, you never want your food to touch any plastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it can potentially leak, leach into the uh, food. It's, uh, and never, never anything hot. You never want anything hot to touch plastic. Mm -hmm. um, Cause, yeah, because that, that's the thing now, isn't it? And again, I know for a lot of people listening to this for the first time, if you're of my generation, this might well all sound insane. Right, um, and Jake, I will link to, to loads and loads of studies in the podcast description because this is we were told Tupperware is amazing, you store stuff in Tupperware, and then microwavable dishes came out, and you could just throw them right. in the microwave. And indeed, you're warming up plastic, which I think if you just put it outside the microwave, as in if you consider it without the preparation of food, warming up plastic with a lighter or something like that is not a good idea in anyone's book. Way, right. Everyone thinks that's insane. But as soon as we go, yeah, but it's Tupperware, we'll throw it in the microwave for a couple of minutes and, <laughs> and then we'll eat it. It's We don't see leaking as a problem because we don't physically see it. Right, or you can't physically smell it or taste it. No, exactly. It is all... Yeah. It is, like I said, when you think about it, it is crazy. Um, but this, the, the, the studies are genuinely getting clearer and clearer and clearer on, on, on all this sort of stuff. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So we're clearing out all the smelly things, right? All the ni <laughs> nice smelling things. That's right. Uh, we're going back to uh, water and vinegar to clean with. We're buying bars of soap again in the way that, you know, we used to do it in the 1960s. <laughs> so to speak, in the 70s. Um, what's the last other, what's the other thing, the last one that you think, okay, if people did this, that would make a big, big difference. Okay, so simple things that you can do to have your air in your home clean, mm -hmm. okay? Take your shoes off when you come in the door. Mm -hmm. Too many pesticides are coming into your house and getting into your house through the shoes, potentially that you're not leaving at the door or in the closet. Okay. Uh, open your windows. It doesn't matter what time of year, open them mm -hmm. even a crack just to get some flow of air into your home. So many homes are now made so tight. Mm -hmm. They're almost, you know, there's not enough air in there, but more importantly, getting fresh air and the, the, Indoor Air Quality Association, which is a worldwide association, this is the number one thing that they tell you regarding indoor air quality and to make sure you are constantly opening up even a crack just to get some fresh air. Now, if you mm -hmm. live on the expressway, that's a whole nother issue. Yeah. Let's hope, you know, you let's hope you have an air purifier. But if you don't, so get that, get those cleaned. Your ceiling fans, if you have ceiling fans, absolutely clean those ceiling fans before you turn Good them on shout. for the season. Make sure that those are always being cleaned um, because the dust that settles on those is, um, can be, those can actually have chemicals in them just from the cleaning supplies. It, it can settle in the dust. So clean those often. If you have window air conditioning units, clean those filters. There's little filters that come right out. You wash them, put them back in, clean those, get rid of those old, the old dust that's still in there. In your furnace, if you have a forced air and if you have an air conditioning for your whole entire house, replace those filters. Some people do them four times a year. I do ours twice a year because I don't mm -hmm. turn on our air conditioner that much. 
clean those. So that's making sure you have clean air in your house and it's being um, circulated without dirt being blown into Mm -hmm. your house that's in those filters. Dry cleaning. Before bringing the dry cleaning into the house, let it air out if you can outside anywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you're driving home with it in your car, open up the windows because dry cleaning can be toxic. It all depends on where you take it. But the dry cleaning can, um, uh, you know, you don't want to bring the smell of those clothes that have to outgas somehow into the house. So those are some simple, easy tips. Now, beyond that, I have an indoor air quality monitor that tells me what chemicals are in each room. I do that for clients so you can get an indoor air quality monitor and an air purifier of course is um, a great way to go if you can afford an air purifier well that is some really really sound advice because again it's astonishing how simple it is isn't it um because yes. i never i mean we don't have ceiling fans in the, in the uk it's never warm enough to need air conditioning in scotland <laughs> but it it is i never would have considered that of course i see that they're dirty and dusty and that they need to be cleaned and all that sort of stuff and my you know i'm looking up at my light fitting and all that sort of thing thinking yeah okay i don't look in that direction often enough i clean everywhere but up up there you know needs it needs right. a bit of a, but yeah ceiling fans and air conditioning units makes perfect sense to me and uh, i've got a couple of dogs as i said and and i clean their water filter all the time um because right, right. i don't want my dogs drinking dirty water uh, right. However, you know, I could probably do with cleaning the the uh, the lamps in my house a little bit more often. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. And you know what? I see some plants behind you. So mm-hmm. plants. Yeah, are they, you another. need to clean them for sure. Well, you need to clean them, but plants have plants around your house. We're so fortunate because plants can automatically uh, clean the air that you mm-hmm. uh, live in. So it can fill. Those are natural filters. I have plants everywhere in my home mm-hmm. um, because I know that it cleans the air. My dad taught us that as kids. So yeah, there's um, a lot of this old wisdom that for yes. a little while we wrote off, right? 80s, That's 90s, right. everybody was insane. Exactly. <laughs> yep. And yep. chemicals and making as much money as possible was like the perceived wisdom of the time and now i think we're all finding now 20 years later that you know (laughs) maybe there was something to it Um, right on that happy note was there anything else you wanted to touch on no i think we covered quite a bit i Um, think of course i'm easy to find uh the Mm -hmm. the joy of having the internet people can follow me on instagram and ask me questions i'm pretty Mm -hmm. accessible i like to be out there and uh available so feel free to shoot me a message or send me anything that you know you have a question about and i'd be more than happy to answer it awesome and on that happy note i will then press stop record so stop press stop record i did uh i really enjoyed that thanks very much to t uh for coming on like i said you can find her on the green living gurus.com t's organic uh organics sorry uh we'll link to all the um, all the website and, and Instagram, Facebook, YouTube uh, ch- channel and all that sort of fun stuff. Now she's got, like I said earlier on, this this was a tricky one for me. <laughs> it was difficult. Was, I was very much raised for, for the best part of the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years that people like uh, T were um, out of their mind, <laughs> basically, right? That they were insane for thinking that household cleaning products were dangerous. Uh, that there could be problems with them. Um, that an aerosol spray wasn't completely safe and that it wasn't a good idea to be breathing in that sort of, say, Febreze air. You know, I, I was still, I, I still thought that, you know, uh, shampoos and all that sort of stuff. And I obviously I did an interview a long time ago with Dr. Hugh Pharma about the microbiome that we thought, you know, that skincare products were all okay. And now it turns out that there's some issues with that, that we have to be a little bit more careful. Um, and the science is very much moving uh, in, in T's direction, right? And I'm always, always, always on the side of, of, of science. You know, if, if I try to be at least and get my preconceptions out of the way, 
and you know more and more studies are coming out aerosols are a bad idea PFAS are a problem uh, microplastics we know are an issue uh, but household chemicals a lot of um, a lot of the cleaning products are also linked to one and one, one or two iffy things um, I will link to some for those of you who were as skeptical as I was um, as I said, like I said, I was already not skeptical anymore before I asked uh, asked T to come onto the show, but it's still difficult because <laughs> if you if you hold an opinion for 15, 20 years, it's very difficult to to move in the other direction when someone else is is, is already miles ahead of you. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, I, I I learned an awful lot. I found it was a phenomenal chat. Um, I'll definitely get rid of most of my household cleaners anyway, right? It was already the plan, but now, thanks to T, I also know what I can replace them with. And that is, of course, I still want a clean house, right? We, we all do, right? So, uh, no in the news this week, because this thing is already running into an hour, and I know that a lot of you guys are saying that, you know, an hour is actually long enough, Pete, and if you stick a 20 minute in the news this week at the end of it, all of a sudden, it messes up my schedule. So, <laughs> you know, when we do the interviews, uh, we might skip the interviews news this week and the behind the labels and all that sort of stuff for a little while at least. Uh, also makes the YouTube videos uh, a little bit shorter, which always helps, right? And helps me with transcription and all that sort of stuff. Anyways, you have a tremendous week. I don't know yet whether the uh, interview that I'm doing on Monday, but I will get that out in time for next Sunday. So I don't know what it's... Uh, what next Sunday's episode is going to be about yet. But, you know, we'll figure it out, right? Peter at healthypostnatalbody.com. If you have any questions about anything uh, health-related, postnatal health-related, exercise-related, diet-related, all that sort of stuff, uh, just give me a shout. As always, give us a like, a subscribe, and tell your friends, you know, that there's a little podcast out there that they can subscribe to. It's always nice for me, right? Um, you have a tremendous week, and I'll... Catch you up next week, right? Bye now. I know you, you're the color in the lines type. Never shake things up, kind. Don't speak your own line. I know you, everything has limits. Obey, don't ask questions. You're the one trying to make me listen. <laughs> My head was made for the clouds. Want me, come get me, I'm not coming down. Are you mad? I don't care. Don't understand, I don't care. I'm just here to pop your bubble, pop, pop your bubble, pop, pop your bubble, pop. I'm just here to pop your bubble, pop, pop your bubble, pop. I know you, dreams are way too risky Scared of anything you find too tricky Don't let me, I'm too witty I know you, with your do's and do nots Trying to get me to stop But you're in for a shock My head was made for the clouds Want me, come get me, I'm not coming down Are you mad? I don't care Don't understand? I don't care I'm just here to pop your bubble, pop, pop your bubble, pop